Mini Wargaming Dan here, and I'm going to talk about Battle Wagons. Tactica, Wog, uh, Battle Wagons, and especially the little Death Roller. I love that little squeaky noise. It's such an orc thing. <laughs> so, Battle Wagons, well, they are. They're Battle Wagons. Okay, so, first of all, Battle Wagons are expensive, and so you gotta remember that. So when you're bringing them, you either get a. F There's two ways to bring them. Either you bring them as a firing platform, as a tank, in which case you don't want to move them because if you move them, then you can only shoot like one weapon. And okay, there's one upgrade right away. I'm going to tell you not to bring. It's the kill cannon. So kill cannon is large blast ordnance. You know, good strength. Not enough to glance uh, lane raiders though. Just under that. So well, same strength as a Luda. Um, and then AP3. So it, it's good, but it only has a 24 inch range. So all of a sudden you're like, uh, uh. Like you can't, you can't, you have to move up really, really close to them. And so instead, with all those points, it's because it's really expensive. And also, you can still transport guys inside, which is awesome. Like you can fit guys inside. Well, like if you upgrade a loot wagon to a boom gun, then you can't. So battle wagon, you can fit them inside, but okay, kill cannon, too many points. I would rather, you can take up the four of the following guns. So you can take four rockets or four big shooters. So instead of, uh, honestly, I'd rather take the other guns because then it's not all on one gun. You have multiple guns on so weapon destroyer that you can't just like take off so you have lots. But, in all honesty, I wouldn't even do that. It's a bit expensive for that. And if you did, you obviously want art case, you know, you want to make it, you know, close top so it doesn't get blown to smithereens. And again, as defensively, when you're guarding like an objector or something, with just too many points. And so instead, use it primarily as a transport to get your troops up the board. Now it is expensive, but here's why it's expensive. Front armor, 14, that's right only armor 14 in the codex. Back armor is still 10 and side armor is in between. So here's the thing about the battle wagon. It's kind of long and skinny and so the front arc is always how you measure vehicles in 40k is you take the very center around there and then you measure to the corner. Okay and then you measure to the corner and you go all the way out and that's you know, how you measure the arcs. Okay, so it's got really big side arcs, really small front. Now, you could always just make your own custom battle wagon and make it really wide and skinny and <laughs> make it really small, really huge back arc, really massive front arc. That would be ridiculously silly. Don't do that, because it'll just look ridiculous as well. But it's possible. Anyways, so, to be aware of that because it's really important when you're moving up to be aware of what your front arc is because your front arc is so much stronger than your side arc. Okay, it, it, you can take like so many more guns can hurt it or slash glance it. It's just that extra two armor is huge. It really is. So when you're moving on the board, just folk, be sure at the end of your movement that you're facing what you want. Now, if you're using it as a transport, almost, almost always, no, always, you have to. I'm telling you right now, you are not allowed to field a battle wagon without a death roll. Maybe you custom build it or get the battle wagon edition kit for it. There's just, it's too much fun. It's just one of those things. My favorite thing in, in the codex is just that excites you. Is that you get there and you just roll a death roll when you get to roll D6 to see how many strength 10 hits it gets. That's right. You tank shock or ram something, each unit that you hit with a tank shock or ram gets D6 strength 10 hits. Is AP nothing though, so it's not terribly effective against units, but you know, extra couple wounds here and there is fine. But because you're also tank shocking, means they cause morale tests, you know, and it's just, even if they're leadership 10, which is a lot of stuff, if you can make them roll, hey, that's great. And for those people that really don't want a death or glory, they're like, nah, I don't want you to run over. It's the perfect death or glory deterrent because no matter what, if you stop it, if you 
just blow it up, it doesn't matter. You get hit with 2d6 strength 10 hits instead. Yeah, so it's like, it's almost like a stupid decision to death or glory a battle wagon. First of all, because it's front armor and it's 14, so it's hard already, like really hard. And then you get hit with 2d6 strength 10 hits. I mean, it's 2 to 12, so it's really, you know, obscure, but most often about 7 or 8 strength 10 hits. So, yeah, so it's just like, no one's going to death or glory. I mean, no one death or glories anyways, unless it's like some massive thing, and then you try to ram it with a truck, and it's like, well, I automatically pen, and you're open top. So, it's yeah, so there's some cases where you want a death or glory, which is sad, because I love ramming things with my trucks. But, or tank shocking. I almost see them as the same thing because they're really, really similar. But it's great because now this is your best anti-vehicle in your codex, okay? Death roll, because with ramming, you ram, it's like you move. It, how ramming works is you take every three inches you moved as a strength, then it's 10 plus your front, or like your front armor minus 10 is another plus. If you're a tank, that's another plus. So a battle wagon would be four, because it's armor 14, minus 10 is four. It's a tank, so that's five. And so you have strength five, and then you add how many inches you moved. And the max it can move is, you know, 12, so it's divided by three, because every three inches you move, so that's another four. So if a battle wagon hits something, that's strength nine, which is still pretty good. Like, best case scenario, you hit something with strength nine, but then you also get hit with the same strength, but whatever the, the other front armor or whatever armor you're hitting of the other vehicle. And so if you hit, say, like the side of a rhino, it's, it would be, because you move that far, so the strength against a rhino would be strength nine. Against the battle wagon back would be, can you move 12 inches, that's four. The rhino is a tank, so that's plus one, so that's five. But the side armor is only 11, so it's only another plus one. And so that's only like strength six. Against your armor 14, meh. <laughs> See, nothing happens to you. So it's like, ramming's fun already, but you have to position it, and it's always hard to get a good ram off that'll actually do something awesome. So with a death roller, you move over, you just go, and you ram them. And it's like, ha, ha, ha. ramming does take out, okay. No matter what, if you, if you touch them, Okay, you're like, oh, I hit you with a strength four hit. whoop bitty do or ask minimum strength five, I guess. But yeah, you're like two inches away, you're like, but I ram you. Strength five hit, oh, nothing happens because you're like a land raider. But wait, I get D6 strength 10 hits. All of a sudden I'm glanced, or I'm penetrating on fives and I get like a bunch of them, you can blow up land raiders. Land raiders are so hard, or monoliths, or whatever, all those annoying vehicles. The only thing that's not good against are skimmers because skimmers can dodge on like a three plus. It's like ridiculous, they can just, I mean, you're ramming me, dodge, but they don't even dodge. This is how it works. Battle wagons comes and they're like, dodge. And the battle wagon stops. It's confused because it didn't hit anything. And so instead of keep on driving, it stops. I don't understand that rule at all. I don't like it, but that's the way it is. So anyways, after that big rant, <laughs> battle wagons are meant for destroying your vehicles and getting your troops up the board. So they work two tier. And so again, they can use them as a pl firing platform back, but don't bother. So, what up other upgrades do you take with it? I usually just take one big shooter. Because if you get a weapon destroyed and you don't have a weapon, then you get immobilized. So if you're getting shot a lot and you're open topped, often than not, you're probably going to die before your weapon's destroyed. But on that rare case, might as well for just a few little points, give it a big shooter and those occasions when you only move six, then you can shoot the big shooter as well in your battle wagon. So in battle wagon, transport, can, you, can feel, you can transport so many things in a battle wagon effectively. First of all, you can squad a field of burn-ups. So the burn a wagon, which is awesome. You move up, place a template beside the wagon, burninate everything. It's just everything touching, you know, times, whatever. It's open top, you wanna keep it open top. Um, and so you can you put 20 shooter boys, you move up six inches, all of a sudden, within 18 inches range, you know, shoot a boys at 40 shots, blah, 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 blah. and just things just they just die, and everything inside the battle wagon, battle wagon is pretty safe. And so the battle wagon, it's expensive, but it more is a hey, I'm protecting what's inside quite effectively 
against you know all the other things shooting at it, okay? So that's great. But then also, if I manage to get up there, then I can death roll or something, and it's great, and it's awesome. But if you're taking battle wagons, you almost need, always, a custom force field. Because there's a lot of things, I can still pop AB-14 in the world, not, not all armies have as much trouble as orcs. <laughs> and because it just, it's not that hard to get side armor. It really isn't. And so you really need that cover save, you know, that, you know, to take out half of the shots shooting at the battle wagon, to keep them alive. So you get up, you wanna hit, you wanna do awesome things with it. And so maybe two big shooters if you wanna be super careful, but battle wagon, death roller, big shooter, and you careen them as fast as you can towards the enemy. But remember, if you move six inches, you can shoot, everyone, shoot with everyone inside, all the passengers. If you move more than six inches, you cannot. And so sometimes it's worth it because a tank shock or a ram, a tank, well, a tank shock, you have to declare how many inches before measuring and before facing, and then you turn and you move, okay? So, but you can always just only move up to your max. And then same with a the ram, you have to try to move as fast as possible and count as moving as fast as possible. So even if you ram an inch, you still count as everyone inside uh, moving. So even with, so now there's little, those little tricks with like red paint job, because red paint job allows you to move an extra inch and not incur penalties, okay? And so you can move 13 inches and still only count, or you can move seven inches and everyone inside can still shoot. What you cannot do, however, is if you're in base to base with another vehicle, if you move one inch to ram, because of the ramming, the wording, you still count as moving full. Even though you've actually technically moved nothing at all, because you declared a ram, you have to try. You have to try to move as fast as possible. So if you're one, if you're with one inch, you're like, I move one inch, and I hit you with the death roller, and then, but you're not allowed to move into other vehicles. And the death roller only is in effect when you ram or tank shock something. So you cannot do that. It's very sad. However, you know, red paint job all of a sudden becomes a lot more viable just because that little extra inch to move seven inches instead of the six to get in the shooting range, or that extra, just because the ram with a death roller is so important because there's so much damage. You get one good ram off with a death roller, it can totally turn the tides of the game, especially if you're like traveling through a couple squads of units. Yeah. <laughs> so red paint job is actually quite very viable as well with the battle wagon. Everything else, very situational. Most of the time you're not gonna use them. Might as well save your points for more battle wagons. Now, I know someone wants me to mention this, so I will, and I probably mention it all the time in less videos, but battle wagons, and it's, you know, it overlaps with a lot of other troop and other tactica that I've done, so go back and watch all that. So I'm not gonna put it on the board and show you all the different things, because I've already showed another tactica, so watch. If you're wondering how battle wagon interacts with a certain troop inside, go look at that specific troop tactica. But the battle wagon, can be taken, so it's a heavy support, so you can get three of them. But as a dedicated transport, you can take them with knobs or mega knobs. And so you can take three of those, so that's six battle wagons. And then with a war boss, you can, up, you can upgrade a knob, or change a knob from an elite to a troop. So you take two war bosses, two knobs as troops with dedicated battle wagons, so that's two. Three more elite knobs with battle wagons, that's five. Three more battle wagons, that's eight. Mm-hmm. And so you can just spam death rollers and it's probably not gonna be terribly effective. You can fit it all in at 1,500 points, barely. But more, maybe at 2,000 points it might be effective, but then there's more things that can shoot you. I don't know. All in all, battle wagons, they, to be honest, they're, a, they're an over expensive transport. They are. They're really over expensive transport, but because of AV-14, it really scares a lot of people and it forces the enemy to get those high strength single shot weapons that against your boys are gonna be next to useless. And there's only so many, and once you empty out of your trucks, unless you're playing kill points, the trucks are basically useless and are running around tank shocking anyways. And so it's not that big of a deal when they blow up if you've already delivered your payload of boys kind of thing. 
And obviously, the death rolls, I mean, battle wagons will be useful until you, well, you die because you have a death roll. You can just charge, <laughs> ram everything and, and tank shock everything and cause all these crazy things. But because of AV14, they have, they have to bring an answer to that. They have to bring something that can penetrate that. And the more things that your opponent has that has those high strength shots, the better off you are with your hordes of boys running up. Because that's less things. Instead of bringing like a template that I can shoot, they're bringing, you know, a single shot weapon. Now some things like the Tau railgun, you know, they can shoot one single shot or a big blast. And that's just annoying. There's no way to get around that. But for the most part, using it, bringing a battle wagon, even though it is no expensive transport, forces the enemy to deal with things the other, another way, or the battle wagon just survives. And then you can just tank shock a lot more. As long as you don't allow them to flank. Protect his flanks, protect that side armor. Very important, again, where you're facing your battle wagon because you don't want them dying prematurely. So, fill them up with shooter boys, burnas, flash gits, or anything else really that you want. Uh, or big squad of knobs, mega knobs, whatever. Run them off the board. When time is right, you can jump out and attack. But just because battle wagon so many points, what you're gonna find most effective is a shooty squad that's gonna be, be able to sit in the open top transport and be able to shoot out while it's still alive and protect that. And then when it comes out, then they can shoot assault as normal just because it costs so many points. Anyways, battle wagons are great fun, good times. And so I actually, I've only, no, I have brought four before in a list and it's just, it's insane just seeing the opponent scramble to try to find, like, okay, there's one AV-14, another AV-14, another AV-14, and another one. It's like, it's that land, later, land raiders were, were annoying. You really can only bring ever three of those. You bring four battle wagons, like, ah! But there is an easy answer if you get around the side armor and shoot. And so for those of you who are watching and want to kill battle wagons, it's really all you do. Once you get around the side armor, they're relatively easy to take out. That's why you position your troops properly, Try to give them a cover save, if not with uh, custom force field, then with your trucks guarding the side. Not so much against front, because AB-14 can withstand a lot. But just to keep things on the flanks and keep your battle wagons alive so you can use those death rollers. And I promise you, you will love the experience. And that's it. So happy wargaming. I want you to death roll everything you possibly can. And this is me, Wargaming Dan, signing out.